Perfect. I'm going to Puerto Rico tomorrow. My name is Richard Crazy Legs Cologne of the Rocksteady Crew, and I am on a mission to do everything that I can to help my people in Puerto Rico. After Hurricane Maria struck in September, my organization, Rock Steady for Life, started a successful crowdfunding campaign to benefit people on the island. I then reached out to Red Bull, who was able to get me on one of the first planes to the island and provided me with all the resources we needed to carry out our mission. Red Bull linked me up with Waves for Water to help bring clean drinking water to the residents who desperately needed it. So looking at the map, you see a ton of data points out here. Uh, red is obviously what you've directly contributed to, either on the ground or through the Rocksteady for Life campaign. Mm -hmm. This represents impacting over 135,000 people. That's the big part. We've helped a lot of people, but there's still so much work that needs to be done. I'm very excited for this trip. Providing access to clean drinking water is still a priority, but I also want to broaden my impact. My plan is to link up with other Puerto Rican activists who are working to rebuild the island and see how we can help them out. So, you know, it's been a couple of months since the first time you've been here. Shit hit the fan, there's still shit everywhere, you mm -hmm. know? I think the water's, the water's an issue not only in, in potable water or drinkable water, there's, there's other issues. There's, there's a lot of water stuck and it's creating disease and it's creating, you know, mold. These filters effectively treat contaminated water, but it's not as simple as handing them out. People need to be trained on how to safely use them and clean them, and that's what I'll be doing today. This is going to be my first time giving out water filtration systems without waste for water. I'm definitely nervous, but I do have my boy from New York, Puerto Rico Rob, along for the ride. This filter can produce 100 gallons of water per day. This is his first time. <laughs> One of the women that we just met is taking us to see an elderly man and his son whose house was badly damaged by the hurricane. They have a tarp on the roof, or the tarp is the roof now. This is what Maria done. So it broke down the whole shed? Oh, all this. What does it cost to fix this? Oh, we we can put this uh, again because we yeah. don't have nothing new. You just, I don't know how much we can spend. Any other? One senior? Mom, Mom. 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 Like many people in Puerto Rico, Mon and his son have been relying on bottled water. This filter will allow them to safely drink the rainwater they've been collecting. This is a grassroots word of mouth effort. We meet someone and they introduce us to someone else. I'm going to try to, to get this filter to the whole community. Doesn't matter who is it, religion or political, or I guess working for the people. Thank you, I appreciate it. Bye bye. We are heading to Rincon on the west side of the island to meet up with my friend Angela. She does a lot to help the deaf and hard of hearing community. The deaf are still without basic needs, and that's a problem. I made a Facebook video. I said I'm going to stop here and here and here. One person saw the video, then they go to another person's house. Hey, 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 come on. And they come here and they meet to get the supplies because they don't have access because there's no electricity, no internet, and they can't just be informed by phone. So they really have to be like person to person. Now you want this to be a system that stays stationary. You don't want it moving around. Is it ready? It's ready. All of them are ready. I grew up hearing and I lost my hearing uh, when I was around a teenager. I typically bring out supplies, sustainable supplies, to different remote areas. And uh, all my focus went on Puerto Rico because my family lives here. And I grew up not here, but coming here. I didn't really know the deaf community in Puerto Rico until this. I, I have a lot of friends here. We've been giving out Lucy lights everywhere we go. Since they're solar powered, they're really helpful to people who still don't have dependable electricity. Those of us who can hear well often take communication for granted. But for the deaf, losing power makes this basic necessity extremely difficult. If you don't have light to see, 
you can't use sign language. You go to somebody's house and you want to knock on their door. Something that hearing people will take for granted. You knock on their door, there's no strobe light, there's no electricity. They're not going to hear the knock. So we can go up, we might need light to communicate. Do you have the solar lights for her? There's so much that needs to be done. I'm trying to make it easier. This light is going to enable you to communicate at night. Let's do it. That works. <laughs> Hurricane Maria not only destroyed homes and much of the electrical and telecom systems, it also wreaked havoc on Puerto Rico's farmers who lost nearly all of their crops. Today, Rob and I are meeting up with two food activists, Tara Rodriguez Besosa and Camille Colazo, to find out about their efforts to aid farmers. So we go to a farm and we just start to get to work knowing what needs to be done, whether it be a latrine or a germination station or a roof or, you know, set up a solar system. We have everything we need, we camp out there, and we just help out in the farm. After Maria, we started a fund called We Grow Puerto Rico that will give support to 100 and plus farmers from five different farmers markets so they could have some support monthly as a work insurance until they get back on their feet. Tara and Camille are concerned about the big picture food situation in Puerto Rico. Currently, the island imports more than 85% of its food. Within the next 10 years, if we want to produce at least half of the food that we eat, we just need a whole bunch of different types of food systems that are working together. Well, a lot of the work that I'm involved in is dealing with community gardens, getting people to just start growing their own food. You don't need to be a farmer or live outside of the city to do this. We just need more people growing food. Yeah. And then and that's it. Every little support that we have received is a pat in the back. Keep on going. Yeah. And we're really grateful. Today we're heading up to the mountains in Caguas to work with Waves for Water and local activist Fernando Silva. This small farming community doesn't have access to clean water, so we're going to help install two water cisterns, each equipped with multiple filters, to help them out. We found a spring up there, the community found a spring, and we're basically going to siphon the water off the spring and gravity feed it into the cistern and make the water depot for the communities. The only way they can take advantage of that amazing resource of having a spring in the community is having a way to filter that water. There's a very big secondary problem that's gonna come out of this and it's all the plastic bottles that have been shipped into Puerto Rico. So there's gonna be a big trash problem feeling good about implementing a, a system that, yeah, we use plastic, we use a bucket. So that bucket's gonna have a big life, opposed to a PET bottle that's gonna get drank and thrown in the river, thrown in the trash. And those are the things that we wanna try to avoid. The basis of any recovery of any country is on hands of its own people. We have to provide the resources to the community and then the community will be the driver to solve the problems, not only from the hurricane, but any other problem that we have to face in the future. You know, we could pay for a bunch of filters, but without people like you, it doesn't get the full reach that it could. That's right. So that's a great thing. This is what has blown me away on this trip, seeing all of these people doing their part every day to help Puerto Rico. We're all brothers and sisters. We all take care of each other. That for me is like this whole idea of community. So that when I venture around the island of Puerto Rico, I have support everywhere I go. If you empower the people to solve the issues on their own and look for initiatives that they can actually better their community, then I think we're creating a solution to that bigger problem that we're facing. Thank you. I'm, I'm glad we're all part of the same yeah. team. Yeah. yeah. I'm a proud Puerto Rican because I've seen the deeds of these kind of Puerto Ricans. They are superheroes. They are the epitome of, of amazing. They were there to lift their people up 
when they were in need and when they were in crisis. It's gonna take years and it won't be easy, but together we can rebuild a stronger Puerto Rico.